sbcradio at gmail.com so we can get all the information on our website uh, and let people get more exposure about you, okay? Okay, thank you. Have a good day. You do the same. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Smooth 90.5 FM, WGSJBC Radio. Today is Playwright Tuesday. That was just another playwright all the way from Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, Michigan. Smooth 90.5 FM. We are here getting some good information for you and tuning in every single day. You can also Twitter us at GSJBC Radio. uh, uh, Hashtag uh, GSJBC Radio. Uh, Join us on Twitter, please. Uh, blow up our Twitter account. Blow it up because we're giving away tickets, plays. We're giving away dinners uh, to wonderful restaurants. So we're giving to. We have two dinner Sunday brunch passes for this Sunday. Please tune in so you can win those uh, dinner passes to a wonderful. Seafood Buffet at Shaw's, Shaw's Crab House in Schaumburg. That's right. We're giving away Shaw's Crab House brunch, Sunday brunch on us on Smooth 90.5 FM. You got to call in so you can win those tickets. Smooth 90.5 FM, WGSJBC Radio. Getting back in the mix with Smooth. Steppers. I don't want to say yes, it's separate, but uh, it's kind of that, you know. Yeah. When, you, when you when you don't sign the contract and don't fight. but uh, I want this fight happen because of uh, of the fans, you know. Everywhere I go, even not in America and or in the Philippines, I mean in other countries, they keep on asking me when this fight happened. And I'm adorned with the pound that's making this up, and I'm fine, fine, under cloud nine. Yes, I wear the lamb's wool, the feet of my grass, and the wood defies gravity like the nature of the gas, and I'm fine.
You're listening to Smooth 90.5 FM. Who is this calling? Yes, it is. Just a minute. We got another playwright live on the air. Smooth 90.5 FM, WGSJBC Radio. Who's this caller that's calling me live today? My name is Terrence Boyle. Terrence Boyle? Yes. Well, where are you calling me all the way from today, Mr. Boyle? <laughs> Actually, I'm calling you from Rogers Park, although I'm originally from Northern Ireland. All the way from Rogers Park, and you're from Ireland? Really? Yes. Wow. Yes, I am. I'm teaching at Loyola uh, University, or uh, uh, the Lakeshore campus. Okay. Okay. So, t- and, uh, so I'm teaching Irish and British literature. Irish and British literature. So I take it that you're also a playwright, I take it. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and I have a play coming up at Loyola, uh, March the 9th. 10th, 14th, and 15th. Wow. What what type of play is it? What what is the genre of the play? Well, the genre of the play is uh, an interesting one. I've been working at updating or making contemporary versions of old 14th century plays, these morality mystery plays. And this is actually based on Cain Cain and Abel, but it's going to be very different because the Cain in this play, is actually a drag queen. Wow, really? <laughs> okay. So it's going to be very different, and it's playing, you know, the old mystery plays were a way of preaching at people. This is just raising questions about the whole idea of rejection and things like that, things that really burn into our psyche and make us who we are. And, of course, Cain is always just the marked man, so the drag queen that I have has uh, a birthmark, you know, those port wine birthmarks that he's forever trying to cover up. But it's always a reminder. And in some ways, it becomes almost like sometimes we have psychological things that mark us that nobody sees. So um, I'm playing with those ideas. Uh, and the play is being performed by Vivarium Theatre. They're a small theatre group, and they're doing a great job with it so far. Wow, wonderful. So what, what made you, how many plays have you done so far? Uh, I've done three plays that have to do with the Troubles in Northern Ireland, because I grew up in the Troubles. And one of them I took, and I uh, placed the death and resurrection of Christ in modern times. And I put it into Northern Ireland, my own hometown, Derry. Uh, and I placed it, there's, uh, if you know anything about the Northern Irish Troubles, there was uh, what they called the Good Friday Agreement. And that was just perfect for the play, because the Good Friday Agreement meant the cessation of violence between Catholics and Protestants. And so I put the death of Christ on the Good Friday. So I called it... Um, uh, but oh, what a good Friday! Oh, what a good Friday! Something I can't even remember the title. Right? So I've been playing around with these ideas of both societies in conflict, and also how do you kind of survive that conflict? Uh, and the conflict can be domestic, or it can be political, or both. Wow! Wonderful. So. Is this uh, uh, the type of place that you more so enjoy doing? And how does the church take it that you're doing a play like this? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question, Rob, because, uh, you know, of course I'm working for a Catholic university. And I think what they enjoy is it's part of the discussion. You know, because I do think there is an element of our lives that is inherently spiritual, where we're looking for something beyond ourselves. Uh, and so I think they appreciate the discussion element of it. Plus, I'm bringing out these old texts and trying to breathe new life into them. And that always helps because, you know, you, know, you think of people are always modernizing Shakespeare, they're modernizing Homer, they're modernizing something else. But when it comes to biblical stories, a lot of times the modernizing is the departure from some of the themes that are 
uh, inherent to the stories. And so I, that intrigued me. And what I like about this play is that I'm using screens as well, projector screens, so that while we see uh, Kane performing and giving his monologue, there are images projected in the screens, and some of those images are internal thoughts. Some of them play with the idea, is he predestined to be this way? I mean, and that's both uh, for those who believe in predestination, but also psychologists who believe that we're victims to our own circumstances. You know, you may as well then say that you're marked by the conflict or by the situation that you've grown up in. So I think what the church enjoys, and particularly the university, is that plays like this raise a lot of questions. They don't give answers, and that's the difference between the 14th century and the 21st century. 14th century, everybody had an answer. The 21st century, we have a lot of questions and very few answers. So I think from that point of view, the question becomes important. Wow, okay. So you are putting out a play that stands out and reaches the community in uh, in the Rogers Park area, am I correct? Yes, correct. Wow. It's on uh, Lakeshore Drive. It's uh, at Sheridan Road, 1032 Sheridan Road. And it's actually in a really cool spot because right in the middle of the campus is the Information Commons, which is the library. It's the brightest building on campus because it's glass all over, and so it's uh, when it's lit up, it's, and it's on the fourth floor, and it begins at 7.30, and it's open to the public, and of course, the big thing is, it's free of charge. Okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard it, he said it's free, <laughs> free? Well, how, I know, You know, you free. can't beat that. So, so what, what is it that you want people to really know about you as a playwright, as a director, as a stage producer? What is it that you want them to understand about you and your craft? I, I, think, I think what I would like to say is uh, it's about storytelling. Growing up in the Troubles in Northern Ireland <clears throat> and the position of conflict and we have a society that is driven by social and political dysfunction, then you become very aware of, you know, what you can say, what you can't say. When the troubles uh, began to come into this peaceful time, I remember speaking to someone, and we grew up during the troubles when you weren't allowed to talk to the army, British army, because they were perceived as the enemy. You weren't allowed to talk to other people. You had to be careful what you said. Once the troubles abated and came to an end, I remember talking to someone. She said, everyone now wants to tell their story. And I think that's an important thing. So for me, what I'm doing in some ways is telling my story through theater, through these ideas, and the things that interest me. So I suppose that's what most people do, that when they write, is they invariably want to tell a story. That's really what I think I would like to present, and hopefully people will get something out of it. Okay, okay. So give us the date of your...